Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Michael Mann. This is the Remnant Underground. The Vatican is celebrating... Now, they're not calling it pride. They're calling it World Meeting of Human Fraternity. But I gotta tell you, it looks pretty gay to me. Maybe you could check it out for yourself here. I'll set the stage a little bit. This is inside, inside the Vatican, the Piazza, St. Peter. It's June 10th, which is less than a week ago, right? And here's what was going on. Although Pope Francis, Pope Francis cannot be here, as he planned, he explicitly expressed that this event go ahead without him. There are about 30 Nobel Peace Prize laureates, together with young people and humanitarian associations, and all of them want to understand what kind of world is possible if we focus on the importance of human fraternity, as expressed in Pope Francis' encyclical Fratelli Tutti. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just stop for a second. This is a big time Vatican event. They had people like Andrea Bocelli there. Like they really went out and got some headliners for this thing. It was advertised months in advance. And my question is, where, where, where is everybody? <laughs> I've been to the Vatican events like this for, I've been doing it for years and years. I've, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen such embarrassingly underattended event as this one. But you know what? At least those 50 folks who were on hand, at least they got to know the difference between fraternity and brotherhood. Someone uh, recently told me, what difference is there between fraternity and brotherhood? Actually, that's a good point. You might, one might think it's the same word, but it's not. Uh, okay. Okay, guy, but I mean, <laughs> liberty, equality, fraternity. And we know what you're doing, fellas. You're basically setting up some sort of a Freemasonic <laughs> world church deal. That, that, that's, that's, you know, fraternity is a very important part of it. Uh, equity and inclusion, extremely important part. And then this thing, whatever it is, is sort of not gay pride day, but some sort of a diversity thing that was happening during gay pride week in Rome, right? Now, and keeping in mind, I think I'm exaggerating, keeping in mind uh, that they decided to kick this Vatican event off right in the middle of Pride Month, right? What do you guys make of the of the opening number? Somewhere over the rainbow. I'm not going to draw any conclusions. I just think it's a super pretty song, don't you? Oh, so pretty. Oh, so pretty. What do they think? We're stupid? Like we're not catching uh, these little hints that you could drive trucks through as to what's really going on in the Vatican? It's a rainbow highway to be found. Now, this was specially organized, by the way, for what they call Children of the hug. Of the what? Children of the hug. So the first word I I am saying here today is a hug. I greet you with a hug. The hug. That's what they're calling it. Nobody should be hugging kids right now. No, nobody should be hugging kids, especially. Especially. especially inside the Vatican. If they ever tried to hug my kid, I would knock them out cold. But somebody inside the Vatican for this fraternity meeting says, let's call it the Children of the Hug event. And that passed several levels of approval, I think. It passed, from, yeah, somehow it got approved. Nobody thought, why well, you out of your cotton pick in mind, eminence? Nope, they went ahead and did it. And of course, if you're going to have an event that's, that includes the Children of the Hug, you're going to have to bring in some children to be hugged. And here they are. Hello, Wade. Today is your birthday, so congratulations. I love you. Goodbye. 
there's no thoughts of this is wrong or anything like that. He told me if they ever found out what we were doing, he and I would go to jail for the rest of our lives. Secrets will eat you up. You feel so alone. I want to be able to speak the truth as loud as I had to speak the lie for so long. But stick with me here. This is the Vatican's world meeting on human fraternity and gay. It was for people who are different and gay. And they made that point that the whole thing was for the people who are even the children. What does it mean for you to be here today? Even if nobody's like me, we have to learn living with other and sharing with other with great love. Thank you. That didn't seem scripted at all to me. I mean, she's different. You get it? I don't know how she's different. Isn't it sad that they tell this little girl you're different and your role is to say you're different in front of the cameras so all 50 people at the event can see that you're different, but the human fraternity people are going to embrace you even though you're different? A hug. I greet you with a hug. The children of the, the hug uh, support Pope Francis. But this is what human fraternity and gay is all about. Once again, let's tell our viewers of Rai Uno what is this meeting on human fraternity is all about. It is a fraternity meeting. Okay. <laughs> all right. I, I think I get it. So this, this meeting on human fraternity and gay can be defined as a fraternity meeting. That's fantastic. It's kind of like sovereignty is when you're a sovereign nation. Uh, tribal sovereignty means that, it's sovereign. I mean, it's, you, you're a, you're a, you've been given sovereignty and you're viewed as a sovereign entity. <laughs> that? We can live well together. That's the great message we are trying to convey to everyone. That was awesome. <laughs> Isn't that something? Just live together almost like in a brotherhood of man or, or something. Yeah, maybe no religion. I, I don't know. It just makes me kind of feel <clears throat> like somebody cares and somebody's listening to me, these guys in the Vatican. They, they really, really do care about me. And <laughs> golly, I appreciate that. So, fraternity, brothers, sisters, of the, under the same God. Yes, they are brought together under one sky. Cardinal Gambetti, did you lose a bet or something? And this is uh, uh, just an example. I don't know whether you have it. It was given to you, but you have to plant the seed. And the plant will grow is the seed of fraternity. And next year, we will reconvene with this uh, young uh, new plant. So we plant the seed, and uh, uh, it will grow over time. Yes, and this is how fraternity grows. I'm sorry, but holy crap. Uh, well, I'll see you later, Your Eminence, because I'll need you clearly for the for the most important moment of the afternoon. <laughs> we'll see you, Eminence. Have a nice day. We're we're gonna need you later for the most important part of this dumpster fire. But wait, there's more. This meeting of human fraternity is going to end with another document. document. A huge round of applause for these uh, great uh, figures who have gathered and drafted the document. They will be read out by Nobel laureate Mohammed Yunus and Nadia Murad. We are diverse. We are different. We have different Bene, cultures and religions, but we are brothers and sisters, and we want e to live in peace. Vivere. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the big event, the thing you've been waiting for, really special. A half-naked Roberto Bolle is going to dance for us. 
You gave up other important uh, commitments to be here with us. You, uh, you had to be abroad, possibly, but you preferred to be here. Uh... Did you, did you catch that? The shirtless wonder gave up actual important events to be here at the Vatican, meeting on human fraternity and gay. A witness to fraternity. Well, this is a very important message. Now let's just get to dancing. Gets me in the feels, you know. All right, friends, enough's enough. That's just what's going on over at the Funhouse in the Vatican. And as you probably have guessed, this headline dancer at the Vatican World Meeting on Human Fraternity is openly gay, famously gay, living with a dude the whole bit. <laughs> and yet here he is at the Vatican, friends, during Pride Week. Don't forget. Pride Month, dancing half naked for those little kids that we saw a few minutes ago. You know, kids of the hug. Now this is where it stops being funny. This is, this is under the auspices of the Pope, the Vatican the moral authority of the world, supposedly. And what do they bring in? One of the most famous homosexual dancers in Italy. Dancing for the kids. <laughs> what, what, what's the takeaway? What are we actually supposed to take away from this? Right? Well, Francis just talked about how young people have reached spiritual poverty, and that's why they're all committing suicide. Well, gee, Francis, what are you giving them? Gay dancers inside the Vatican? You think that's going to help them remove themselves from the spiritual poverty guy? Oh, no, no. So you're saying, well, this is just a coincidence. You know, they didn't know. They probably didn't know, right? Guys with the giant microphone. Yeah, they probably didn't know he was gay. You know, it took me a grand total of two clicks to find out who this guy is, right? He's famously homosexual. But the Vatican probably, probably just didn't know. It's a coincidence. But I think people in this audience know better than that, right? You know, for example, like I say, I'm going to the Vatican covering stuff, conclaves and everything else for years and years and years. Everything that happens at the Vatican is scripted. Nothing happens by accident. They can't afford to let things happen. They can't afford coincidence or just things happening by happenstance. Our guy Robbie here, aside from being famously gay, here's, here's the kicker, right? Roberto Bolle. Aside from being a very open advocate of homosexuality, you're not going to believe this. But guess what else he is? He is one of Klaus Schwab's young globalist leaders. They just, the Vatican and the World Economic Forum, no matter how, no matter what it is, they cannot stop jumping in bed together, can they? And of course, Klaus Schwab, we, we've kind of, Moved away from him. He's been farting dust for a while. We're hoping he goes the way of George Soros real soon. But you remember this guy. He's the guy who's going to change your genetic identity. Post-industrial uh, revolution is, it doesn't change what you are doing. It changes you. If you take a genetic editing, right. uh, just as an example, it's you who exactly. are changed. Yeah. And of yeah. course, this has a big impact yeah. on your identity. What happens, Klaus? if we don't want to have a genetic edit. <laughs> you know, friends, are, are, we, are we done with this? Yeah, yeah, I think we really are. I think the world is done with this. We just need people to stand up en masse and tell these creatures, these demons, to go to hell. Get out of our lives. Stop. We're not going to comply.